Hello, welcome back to my studio. We're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve again today, again with the Fusion page. I'm gonna show you the point tracker, which is the simplest and easiest to understand tracker in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. All right, we're here in the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a couple clips lined up here and ready to go, but before we dive into that, let's talk a little bit about what the point tracker does. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. You add points to the point tracker. You can use them to track points in your footage, and then you can attach things to those points, or you can use those points to stabilize your footage. There's a couple other cool effects that you can do that I'll have linked below and in the end screen, but it's actually a really, really simple tracker. So let's dive in here. We've got our first clip. This is just a clip of a taxi. If we play that, we've just got a taxi. It's a nice little handheld shot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a little smiley face to the light at the top of the taxi. First thing we need to do is come back to the beginning of our footage and we'll make sure media in one is selected. We're gonna hit shift space and we're gonna search for tracker. And we're gonna select tracker and hit add. And next thing we're gonna do is take our little tracking point that our tracker added to our footage and we're gonna grab that and we're gonna drag it over the point in our footage that we want to track. Now, a little bit of pro advice. If you are going to be using the point tracker, contrast is your friend. So choose a high contrast point in your footage to track. Otherwise the tracker might slip and get all screwed up and then your whole shot will be well shot. So what we're doing is choosing a high contrast point like this light here. It's nice and bright and orange and it's contrasted well against the green leaves in the background. So we have selected our point and we can come over here into the inspector. Now there's a few different things that we can do with the inspector. Like if we come down to the bottom, we can change the width and the height of our tracking point. We can change the offset. We can maybe change the adaptive mode. I never touch any of this stuff. The most I will do is maybe resize the tracker so I can get a little bit more specific with what I want to track, but honestly, more times than not, you're not gonna need to touch any of these settings. So what we do is we'll come over here and we'll say track forward. And if we come over into our monitor, we will see that our little point is being tracked. And when it's all said and done, you'll get this little dialog box that says render completed. We can hit okay. And if we look at our little timeline here, we'll see a whole bunch of keyframes. Those keyframes are saying, hey, guess what? Your track worked out. And if we come over here, you can actually, if we zoom in on our monitor, you can see the entire track path with keyframes. Look at that, it's all right there. And that's pretty cool. So now what do we do with this? First thing we need to do is go fit so we can see. So what do we do with this footage once it's tracked? Well, in this case, since we only have a single tracking point, what we're gonna do is just stick something to that tracking point. Let's come over into our media pool. We're gonna come down into my images folder, grab this little smiley face, put it in our node graph and connect it to the foreground input of our tracker. And that's the cool thing about the point tracker is it also doubles as kind of a merge node. So you can put things on top of other things. But if we look in our preview monitor, we'll see there's nothing there. We don't see a smiley face. What's going on here? Well, in order to get that smiley face to show up, we need to tell the tracker what it needs to do. So what we'll do is we will select our tracker. We're going to come back into the inspector and we're going to come over into operation. From there, we'll change operation to match move. We'll keep the merge as foreground over background, which is saying, hey, let's make the foreground of our merge follow the path of the tracker on our background. And now you can see we've got our smiley face, but it's a little bit too big. So let's just go ahead and transform that a little bit. We'll bring the size down and we'll just stick it over our little light. And if we come back to the beginning and we play that back, you'll see our smiley face is moving along with our footage. And that's the basics of the point tracker. It's the simplest thing that you can do with it. You track a point, you stick something to that point, and then that something will move along with your footage. But you can do other stuff with the point tracker as well. Like I said, you can 
stabilize your footage. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But first, I need to mention today's sponsor, Artlist, because for this video, I needed some very specific footage. I needed footage that could be tracked. I need footage that would be a good example of what you might want to track if in your own projects. And Artlist made it super, super easy to find that footage. Here, let me show you. We're here in Artlist right now. And what I'm looking for is footage. And if I wanted, I could just scroll through here aimlessly and try and find something that I want. Or I could come over to their super powerful search filters and come into shot type and say, I want handheld 4K footage in raw and log. And I want it to be a medium shot exterior in slow motion during the day. And boom, I have a whole bunch of footage that meets that criteria that I can use in my footage. And not just in these tutorials, I could use them in music videos and short films. I can use them in professional commercial projects. I can use them anywhere I want because of Artlist's unlimited license. So Artlist is where I've been getting all of my stock footage from and not just stock footage. I also get sound effects and music and templates and even plugins. That's right. Artlist just launched plugins. You download a little package and you install it on your computer. And then if you're using Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or After Effects, you'll have 40 plugins that you can use in your footage to make your videos even better. Artlist has everything you need in order to enhance your videos and they've got plans that'll fit any budget. So check out the link in the description sign up for Artlist today. If you sign up using that link, you'll get two months free on top of an annual subscription, which is a, just an incredible deal. Thanks so much to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support creators like me. And now that that is all said and done, let's jump back into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to show you how to stabilize footage using the point tracker. Okay, we are back in DaVinci Resolve. This is my second clip. Let's go ahead and play it, see what we're looking at. This is a handheld shot. There we go. It's a handheld shot guy looking at his iPad, sitting on a rock, got some cars going by. It's a little bit shaky. We want to stabilize it, make it a little bit more smooth. It's super easy to do with the point tracker. Once again, we are going to stop. We're going to come back to the beginning of our footage. We're going to select media in and we're going to hit shift space, search for tracker and find our tracker and hit add. And once again, you'll see we've got a little tracking point. Now, in order to stabilize our footage, we can't work with just one tracking point. We need to be able to track the position. We need to be able to track the rotation, the scale, the perspective. We need to be able to track all of that. And we need a minimum of three trackers in order to make that happen. So let's come over into the inspector right here. Tracker list. We got tracker one. We'll add tracker two and tracker three. And now if we come back into our monitor, you see we've got tracker one, we've got tracker two, and we've got tracker three. And once again, we're looking for some high contrast points in our footage that one won't go off frame during the track and two won't get covered up by a moving object in the track. We've got some cars going across the road. So we want to make sure whatever we track, whatever points we decide to track in this footage, don't get covered up by a car because then the tracker is going to latch onto that car and it's going to go moving. It's just, it's going to be a mess. So let's go ahead and take our first tracker and put it way up here at the top of this building. This building does not go out of frame and it doesn't get covered up. So it's perfect. Then we're going to grab our second tracker and we're going to track this street sign here right at the corner again. It doesn't go off frame. It doesn't get covered up. And then we're going to grab tracker three and we're going to track the corner of the iPad because again, it doesn't get covered up. It's nice high contrast and it doesn't go off frame. And then just like before, we're going to come over into our inspector and hit track forward. And you can see that our footage is being tracked in those three spots. And there we go. We've got our little render completed dialog box here. We'll hit OK. We see our keyframes. We're good to go. Now let's head over into the inspector. We'll come over to the operation tab and this time we're going to choose match move again. But instead of foreground over background, we're going to say background only. 
And you'll see in our monitor, we've gone kind of wonky here. We see a, a transparent background right here. And if we play that back, you'll see that it's moving around. Basically, it's just trying to keep everything stable, but this is gonna look horrible if we just exported it like this. So what we need to do is add a transform after our tracker and we will just size up until we are good to go. Look at that. We've got nice stable footage. There's still a little bit of movement, but it looks a lot less shaky than it did before. And there you go. Those are the two most common uses for the point tracker. You stick things on top of other things and you can stabilize your footage, but there is more that you can do with the point tracker, including this effect that you can check out right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.